2020. This year has taken a lot of things. Maybe it's taken your job. Maybe it's taken someone you love. Maybe it's taken your hope for a brighter future. But it has given you some things. It's given our world the chance to heal. It's given time to focus on what's really important and an urgency to pursue those dreams which have been put aside for too long. What is up everybody? Welcome to the Mango Monkey Show where we talk about personal finance, investing and building wealth. Today we will talk about whether it is a good idea to defer your home loan or investment loan repayment. If you have not done it already, you can call your bank and tell them, hmm, I'm feeling a little worried. I think I'm about to lose my job. The bank is likely to give you a repayment pause, also known as a repayment deferral or repayment holiday. With this, you do not need to pay a single cent into your home loan for the next six months. Now, if you had done it back in March, you were guaranteed to get your wish granted with no documentation whatsoever. You didn't need to provide your bank statements. You didn't need to provide a letter from your employer. You didn't need to provide anything at all. But if you do it now, some banks have started asking for evidence because they do not trust you anymore. But assuming that you can still get it, should you do it? If you want to know what I think, please keep going and hit the like and subscribe button to help me grow my channel. Most customer service reps at most banks will tell you that your credit file will not be impacted by choosing a home loan holiday. Now this is partially true, it is partially false as well. I'm not even sure whether it is true or false. What I know is definitely true is that in Australia, it will not reduce your credit score and your credit file will not show that you are late. However, your credit file shows your repayment history over the last 24 months. For each month, there is a number showing whether you paid on time for that month, whether you were one month late, two months late, three months late, and so on and so forth. Or sometimes whether there was no information whatsoever, whether you paid on time or not. What I have sometimes seen is that the credit file shows there was no information to disclose for that month, for the month of March, April, May, and so on, during the repayment holiday. So when you try to get another loan, what do the smart people at the bank think if they see that your credit file has no repayment history for the months going back to March? They will assume that either the other bank system has screwed up a little bit, maybe some kind of computer glitch, somebody hacked the other bank's computer, or that you took the coronavirus repayment holiday. So if that person suspects you took a repayment holiday, you will get asked to provide the statement of that loan to confirm whether that loan was paid on time or not. Now, if the loan statement shows that you have not been paying that loan for three to six months, guess what? Your application will be declined. Now, this does not apply to all banks. Some banks may still report you as having paid on time, even though you didn't pay a single cent. But I'm telling you, some banks do not do it like that. So it's worth double checking with the bank that you bank with. Some banks don't report you were late, but on the other hand, they also don't report that you paid on time. They just do not show what happened on your credit file. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that even if you try to contact your bank to clarify how exactly they are going to report the information, a lot of the time, because the bank is such a huge, huge organization, the person you speak with on the telephone may not actually know what's going to happen with the other department that reports the credit information. And even if your credit file does show that you have been paying on time, some financial institutions make it a standard practice for you to provide the loan statement of all of your existing loans. If that is the case, then obviously you cannot show that you have been paying that loan on time on the loan statement. So your application will be declined again. Now in Australia, a lot of banks look at the repayment history of your existing loans in the last six months when you want to apply for credit. Home loan deferral does not affect your credit score. It only affects the underlying repayment history. So if you are not going to apply for credit within the next six months, 
after the hormone deferral is finished. By the way, that's not six months from today, but six months after the repayment holiday is finished. Then go all up, call up your bank and ask for the mortgage repayment holiday. After all, you have been working hard so far, you deserve the repayment holiday. You shouldn't spend the extra money on something silly, but rather save it for emergencies. Or what some of you may want to do is to invest that into some investment products, which give you a higher return compared to your home loan interest rate. But before you accept the repayment holiday offer, make sure you ask your bank exactly what you need to pay when the holiday is over. Some banks make you pay the whole amount deferred in one single lump sum at the end of the six months deferral period. So you need to come up with six months worth of repayment. If this happens, you need to look really, really hard for the money, especially if you have already spent the money on the casino. Some other banks do not require you to magically come up with six months worth of money, but they will want you to still finish the loan and pay that off completely by the original end day. What this means is that if your home loan originally had 20 years to go and you took a six months repayment holiday, your monthly repayment will be increased just a little bit. So you will still pay that off completely within 19 and a half years from when the holiday is finished. Now, the final group of banks are really nice to you. They tell you that you don't need to pay anything extra. You are able to pay the same amount of repayment per month. For example, the $2,000 that you have always been paying since last year before the pandemic, but you will finish the loan a little bit longer. So instead of finishing the loan within 20 years from now, you may finish it in 20 and a half years or 21 years from now. This will be very easy for your cash flow but you will end up paying a little bit more interest charges over time. Now, in Australia at least, you will not finish the loan six months extra if you defer that loan for six months. This is because the interest charges will be added onto the loan balance. So you will actually incur extra interest charges during the repayment holiday. And these extra interest charges will in fact attract additional interest. So you will be paying interest on top of interest. So the big question is, should you take a repayment holiday? While I cannot give you any advice, I would do everything in my power to skip the holiday if I may need access to credit in the next six months or so. This includes home loan refinances because it is also difficult to refinance my home loan even if I am not asking for extra money. If I am absolutely sure that I will not need any form of credit in the next six months, and I am already in a genuine financial hardship, I will probably take up the offer of a repayment holiday. If I'm not really in a financial hardship right now, I'm just a little bit unsure about my job stability, I will still try to pay my home loan on time because there is always settling income support from the government and the repayment holiday option later on when I actually cannot pay my home loan. Remember that you cannot defer your home loan indefinitely. So if you defer it now for six months, you may not be able to get another six months later when you really, really need it. If you are still here and you want to support my channel, please hit the like and subscribe button to help me convince YouTube to show my videos to more audiences. I make free videos on personal finance, investing and building wealth. I'm not a qualified financial advisor, but I know a lot of common sense tricks to help you save and succeed financially. Thank you and have a wonderful day.